Hello, Julie here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to create a couple of, uh, well, two pocket folios I'm going to call it. Um, it's a tri-fold and um, it's sideways, I guess, so it doesn't open from left to right, it opens from top to bottom. I'm using Denise Bode design papers for these and this is part of my design team work for Denise. So for the first one, I'm going to cut a strip of paper and I'm using the time warp paper for this one. I love the neutral grey browny tone of it. So um, I'm cutting this piece five and three quarters by 12 inches and that's going to be the base of my uh, folio. Now, the reason I'm cutting it that width is because I want to die cut the top set, uh, section and that's the width of the die. So the die I'm using is called Deco or Deco Half Circle Die and I'm going to attach that to my piece of paper with a piece of um, mint tape. Make sure I've got it nice and straight on there using my T-ruler and then I'm going to take it to my Big Shot and cut it. So you can see it doesn't cut right to the edge so I'm going to take my little scissors and just trim that last piece off so that um, the die cut section is completely freestanding. Now I'm going to take it to my scoreboard and I'm going to score starting from the straight end so not the end that I've um, die cut so I'm going to score at 4 inches and then 9 inches. Now if I was doing this again I would bring that back to about 8.5 inches because um, as it happens when you score a nine, uh, that you can actually see through the um, die cut section to the back of the folio. And I'd rather bring it down a little bit further so you don't have that gap there. So if you're going to do this, um, score it at, um, say, eight and a quarter, eight and a half, something like that. So now I'm going to cut some pockets for the inside of my folio. So I'm going to cut one pocket three inches tall and one pocket two inches tall. And then I'm going to trim both of them down to five and three quarter inches, which is the same width as the folio. Now I'm going to use my centering ruler and I'm just going to mark in the center of the top edge of one of those pockets. Then I'm going to lay the two pockets on top of each other and use my two inch circle punch to cut a finger divot in those two pockets. By um, laying one on top of the other and punching them both at the same time, it ensures that your divots line up when they're in your project. Then I'm going to take my vintage photo uh, distress ink and my domed blending tool and ink around the edge of everything. To make a closure for my folio, I have cut two pieces of um, pattern paper that are half an inch by one and a half inches. I've glued one on top of the other and then I have used my corner round on one end to corner round both corners so that it comes to a sort of a point. Now I'm going to attach that um, little lever thing, little piece of paper to the card front so I'm going to attach it to the not card front the folio front so I'm going to attach it to the actual flap that folds up and makes the front of the folio. I'm doing it now before I attach any pockets because um, I want to be able to cover the brad up with some pattern paper. I use my pokey tool to poke a hole in the front of the folio and um, I'm also use, I'm pushing through onto a soft surface so this what I'm using is a stubby holder that I've cut the bottom out of and cut it open so that it's a nice flat little piece of sponginess and that makes it much easier to be able to push through your papers. This is only one layer of paper that I'm pushing through on the actual folio but the little lever thing is two layers. But Denise's papers are quite thick and uh, yeah, it's best to have something nice and soft and spongy to poke your hole through into. Mm -hmm. 
Now I've taken my all of my pieces to my sewing machine I've stitched around everything and um, I've done some straight stitching and some zigzag stitching. I needed to do that before I stuck anything together. Stitching is of course optional because it's not what's going to hold the pockets or the pieces in place. Now I have, um, because I didn't want to show the inside of the paper through um, the, oh, above the pocket should I say, I've cut a couple more pieces of pattern paper to put behind the pockets. So I've just cut them big enough that they fit behind the pocket. They didn't have to cover the whole area, just so long as they covered the area above the pocket that was showing. So now I'm just going to attach those first before I actually attach my pockets. Um, and then I will use my art glitter glue, which I'm using to attach all the pieces, and attach the pockets. When I attach the pockets, I make sure that it's not right on the fold. You need to have it just slightly above the fold so that the folio still folds up. Now to embellish my folio, I'm going to use this um, stamp from Denise, it's called Primrose and it's a stamp and die set and I have stamped it, heat embossed it and then used the die to cut it out. I have done this um, some time ago, as you can see there I've got a bag full of fussy cuts and um, this row or this flower was in there, left over from a previous project. Now to put behind that flower I am cutting a piece of tulle that's got like a gold fleck in it and I'm just going to use my art glitter glue to attach that to the card, uh, to the um, folio front. The um, little bit of gold glitter in the mesh just helps the flower stand out a little bit from the background. And of course a little bit of bling doesn't hurt anybody does it. So once I have my tool in place, I attach my flower and a few fussy cut leaves, making sure that um, I don't get the flower or anything in the way of my uh, swivel closure. And that's our first folio. I'm going to make a second folio, but it's going to be a little bit different. Now I'm using Overcast is the name of this paper. Both of these papers are from the Cogs of Time paper collection. So this one I'm cutting at four and three quarters by 12. Once I have that, I'm going to use my scoreboard and I'm going to score at four inches and nine inches. Now the nine inches will work on this occasion because I am not uh, die cutting the front edge. For the closure on this one, I'm going to use a circle and I'm going to fold the top flap in behind that circle. So I'm only going to attach half of that circle to the base piece of the folio. Now I cut two circles, I need two because I want it to be fairly sturdy and I'm going to stick them on top of each other. So I cut two using my two inch circle punch and when I tried that on there it was just way too big. So then I used my one inch circle punch and cut two one inch circles out of the reddish coloured cardstock and attached those to each other. I found that the one inch size, I probably would have been happy if I could have had like a one and a half or one and a quarter inch size and I don't have that. So yeah, I'd probably need to get a punch, a one and a half inch punch to be between those two. Although having said that, I have got a die that is probably one and a quarter or one and a half inch. I've got like the nesting circles, so I'm sure there'd be a suitable size in there. I just um, couldn't be bothered fossicking through my dies to find it and use it. Time now to cut my pockets. I'm going to do these pockets a little different to the last one. I'm going to have like a half inch fold in under on each edge of my pockets this time. So I'm cutting two pieces. I'm cutting one piece that's two inches by five and three quarters and I'm cutting another piece that's two and a half inches by five and three quarters. And then I will score at half an inch um, on each of the, well, I'll score at half an inch and five and a quarter inches 
on the five and three quarter inch length on both of them. Now I'm going to cut a little triangular piece off of each of the corners of the pockets and that just makes it um, nicer when you attach your pocket to your folio. You don't see that ledge of paper at the top. And um, so I'm going to do the same procedure with the um, divot, the two hole punch. I'm going to lay one on top of the other and then punch them both at the same time. Then I'm going to ink around the edges of everything. Once everything's been inked around, I'm going to take all the pieces to my sewing machine and stitch around all of them. Stitching is, of course, optional and it's completely up to you whether you like the look of that or not. Time now to attach my pockets and I'm going to do that with my art glitter glue. So I'm going to apply um, liquid glue to the, oh, what, the, the top edge of the flaps. So the uh, flaps will fold under and attach to the, to the background. This just makes your pocket a bit more flexible. You can fit more um, things in the pocket and you have more space because you don't lose that gluing edge. Now you may notice that I've changed the orientation of this folio. In the first one I had the four inch section down the bottom. In this one I've got the four inch section at the top and I'm going to attach my pockets to the centre section and the top section whereas in the first one I attached my pockets to the bottom section and the middle section. That of course was because the top section was barely there. The die um, cut all of the pattern out of there. So this time you can see uh, um, the two different ways that you can make this folio. Really even if you wanted to you could even put another pocket on that front uh, section as well on the inside, um, the bottom piece as it is in this folio. Uh, but I just thought that might be a bit bulky and the embellishments on the two might sort of interlock with each other. So I've just gone for the two pockets, one at the top and one on the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to embellish this folio. I'm using, once again, a collection of uh, fussy cut pieces that um, I have previously fussy cut, amongst which are some tags. Um, these were all fussy cut from various paper ranges that Denise has. So, as I said, I just sit and fussy cut when I'm um, feeling like watching TV or something like that and they put them in this a bag and then when I want them they're there for me to use. So I'm going to put this on fast forward and um, just let you skip through all of this um, process but you'll be able to see exactly what I do. Um, I, I do ink all of my uh, embellishments and um, I just like the look of the ink. It makes everything stand out more I think. So. Yeah, so I'm just going to put this on fast forward and um, I'll come back to you shortly. I forgot to mention that I will be putting a row of lace across the front of the top flap of this folio.
So the two tags I made are going in the middle section pocket and now I'm going to make a journaling card to go in that top pocket. To do that I've cut a piece of white cardstock 4 inches by 3 and a quarter inches and I've also cut two pieces of uh, pattern paper from the same sheet to the same size, so 4 inches by 3 and a quarter inches. I've attached the pattern paper to both the back and the front of the white cardstock and then I have corner rounded all of the corners. Then I have inked around the edge of it. Then I've added, um, I re I'm leaving the one side completely blank just with the muted pattern paper on the back and on the front because I had that beautiful timepiece and, and a rose all I've done there is just add a fussy cut moth and uh, I think that looks lovely. So that's what I did to go into the top pocket of my folio. As a final touch to my folio, I decided to add a coat of glossy accents to the little closure button and the little uh, rectangular label that sits above the lace or on top of the lace and um, on the front of the car uh, on the front of the folio and um, this goes on milky it goes on it's quite thick and it goes on milky but when it dries it is perfectly clear it takes probably I usually leave mine overnight to dry and I never have any problem with smudging it or anything like that so if you're going to use it and you know if, if you've got it or if you're thinking of getting it I would recommend it I love it I use it a lot so yeah the trick is to put it in a safe place, place so you don't uh, smudge your glossy accents before they dry so that's my project for today, two cute little folios and um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I will put links in the description box to everything that I've used and especially to Denise's shop and these beautiful papers. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my video. I hope you'll come back and see my next video and if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it if you would subscribe and if you give me a thumbs up, that would be fantastic. Okay, so see you next time. Until then, bye.